Does anyone find it weird that my face can just go so long? Like, look at this. I'm like a cartoon character. But that's like a, that's a frown. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, The Diaries of DIY Danny, where I help solve home decor dilemmas with the DIY. Today's diary is part three of my DIY journey with Fusion Mineral paint owner, Jenny Lynn, who asked me to come into her office space and help make it over with some DIY love. In the first video, I made over her old rusty radiator into a beautiful bright pink ombre splash of art. In the second video, I tackled a cool live edge industrial table with ombre epoxy resin channels. If you haven't checked out those videos, I've linked them in the description box below. But today's video is a really friggin' cool one that I'm so excited about. I'm recreating an industrial beam light using reclaimed barn beam and all I can say it is so friggin' cool! So cool! It is beautiful. I've seen these around town and on the internet and a lot of people are selling commercial versions of this, but there's just something that's just not authentic about it. I've also seen a lot of really amazing DIY versions of this. A lot of people found a good route where you create kind of like a hollow beam using four pieces of wood. But I wanted to go a little bit more authentic. We're all about authenticity on this channel, as you know. So I thought, let's find a beam and let's create this. I mean, like, how hard can it be? Of course, a gentle reminder to hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed and turn on that bell notification so you always know when I upload a new video. Bi-weekly, every Friday, don't miss out. Got a lot of cool projects coming up. But without further ado, let's stop gabbing and roll the tape. First step, I needed to source a barn beam. I had no idea where to start when it came to finding a reclaimed barn beam. Like, what do you do? Do you roll up to a farm and go, yo, you selling barn beam, bro? No. So a little unsure, I just went to the one place that I knew would probably pull through for me, which was a buy and sell website. I was looking for something old, but not rotting. Had character, but not enough character that it would be hard to work with. I was a bit like Goldilocks in the sense of what I was looking for in this reclaimed beam, because you need to know what kind of wood you're walking into, or you end up with a situation like last time. It's not nice. Luckily, I found one and it looked in pretty good shape, so I got in my car and headed straight for it. The crappy part about this was that the beam was downtown and we all know how I feel about traveling downtown. Distance to be 25 minutes. Calculating with traffic, four hours and 25 minutes. Yeah. Finally, after a long journey, I had my beam and it was very big, like, very big, but it fit in my car, so that's all that matters. This beam was $9 per foot, and I was buying six feet, so it came to about 60 bucks. Which is like, so we were all beaming with delight. Did you just throw up in my car? Yes, you did. I'm gonna take Pop Pop for a walk. Day two. This was the part of the project I was the most excited about because it was just cool and I've never done it before. Obviously the beam was too big. What I needed to do was make it smaller. How do you do that? Well, I was gonna split it open with this bad boy right here. This is a five pound wedge. This is quite heavy actually. <gasps> I'm very weak, I've learned. To split this beam properly, I had to determine which part of the beam I wanted to preserve. There was one section that you could actually see was starting to split away from the board, so I decided to use this piece as my natural splitting point. So what I'm gonna be doing is removing all of this and just keeping from here to here. Woo! So I was able to wedge the splitting wedge into the open cracks and basically just hammer it down slowly, taking a few moments in between each hit to listen for natural cracking of the board. Shh, listen. Can you hear it? Woo, she's cracking. Basically when you're trying to split something open, it's better to let nature do the work than for you to force it because then you can create an unnatural split where you didn't want it. It's time to break up. 
So I had to be so careful and just slowly start to split it away, letting the board naturally crack open. Also, cracking this thing really brought some wildlife out to play. Ooh, he's running for his life. Run, little spider. As we split open the world of the beam, we are exposed to the wildlife that has been living inside, deep into the crevasses of the wood. A home to the spiders. No more. It's my David Attenborough impression. <laughs> <laughs> it was a little ragged on some edges, but honestly, that's kind of what I was going for. I didn't want a perfectly square beam. I wanted to go for a really authentic look. So all in all, I think this whole process worked out like a charm. Not too bad. Yay! Beamer. Beam me up, scatty. Armpit sweat. Oh. Okay, so day three. That's six. Day three of this project, I started with a pretty rough looking beam. They say splits are rough, if you know what I mean. <laughs> oh, need more friends. So I decided to take the planer to each side. Using the planer, I could take off all those icky parts of the board that I didn't want, and I could also level off all the sides to make a perfect square beam. Well, perfect dish. The beam was originally six feet long, but it felt too big for the light, so I actually ended up going down to a five foot beam, which felt like a pretty good size and was a lot easier to work with. As I started planning it down, I had to decide what was going to be my thickness, and I decided to go with three and a half by three and a half to the best of my ability without taking too much character away from it. So certain sides were a little bit thicker and there was a little bit more like bowing out, but honestly, like that's what I was going for, something a little un neat. So I used my straight edge to draw a guide and then got back to planing. Boy, do planers make a mess. Wow. Oh, geez. That's going to be a bummy one to clean up. So once I finished, I sanded the board smooth using my orbital sander and an 80 grit sandpaper just to remove any splintered edges and roughness. The point of this wasn't to remove the character, but just take out the icky parts. Whew! Was that board looking amazing or what? Wow! Do you guys even remember what it looked like before? Ah! Yeah. Yeah. Oh boy, I need to get a garbage bin fast. Last step, I just needed to clean up the space. Oh my god. But before my day was over, I got a quick coat of stain on the beam. Okay. So, a challenge that I had to face was what was I going to do about the wrapping lights? I thought I could just buy a whole bunch of singular pendant lights, but the cost of that would be outrageous. So, I ended up ordering, I don't know what they're called actually. What is this called? Let's see, Chinese schematics here. That's not helpful. What on earth is this called? Probably should have figured this out before I start filming. A industrial pendant light antique adjustable DIY spider pendant light multiple vintage chandelier for dining room. It looks like that. And all 12 are now here. So the connector that came with that light was just too big. I figured out that I was gonna have to DIY my own electrical box that was gonna sit on top of that beam. Essentially, I needed to remove the knockout sections from the electrical box, and then in each knockout, I fitted in these conduit connectors, which was going to be a better way to feed my cords into this box. Then I had sourced a plate that was going to be the lid to my electrical box, but there isn't anything that actually comes with a hole in it, so I had to DIY that hole. To create my one inch hole on my metal top, I used a metal hole saw and my drill press. Perfect hole. After that, I spray painted the electrical box and the top plate in a matte black that was a paint and primer in one. And then to finish the day, I added a nice finish on my beam, which was a polyurethane top coat. Ooh, so nice. Day five. And boy, this day started off real good. Yeah, I see you. I know. You're waiting for the bacon. A balanced breakfast helps your body and your brain. Do they say that? 
I needed to figure out how I was going to hang this beam up. So I ended up sourcing a one quarter inch steel plate that I plan to wrap around the beam that's gonna give it that really nice industrial look. Ideally, we can get the steel to wrap around and then have two little handles on each side. And then we drill holes here. That's one option. The other option is to have it wrap, but then also edge it so that the two pieces connected there. You'd have to get your chain, maybe like meet here and then connect to the top. Or this one, you could have a, a loop belt and then the chain would go up. This one is easier for the chain and this one's easier for the bending of the steel. <laughs> There's no winning. Essentially what I learned is that I really need to learn how to weld. Now that is definitely on my 2020 DIY bucket list, but for now I just had to set my dreams aside and kind of go with the basic U shape. That's okay. I'll get over it. No, it still looked amazing, but you know, just wasn't the vision. Then using a vise and a big old hammer, I was able to smash this thing to the shape that I needed. Boy. Call me God of Thunder cause I was wielding that hammer so good. Once I had my frame bent out, I left about one inch of space beyond the beam so that I could attach my metal chain to hang from it. I just had to drill two holes on each side of the U, one which was going to be for my chain and the other one which was going to be like a setting screw so that it wouldn't slide around my beam. To do that, I just dented a hole into the steel using a punch and then drilled through it using a 1 8 inch drill bit to start and then finished with a 11 64 inch drill bit. Then all I had left to do was just sand down the edges in the surface to A, remove the burrs and just to scuff it up a little bit because I was spray painting it black. If you have a metal surface, it's always good to sand it first. Just give it a light scuff because it kind of gives something for the paint to grab onto. That evening, I got moving on to building my electrical box. Please note, I am not an electrician, but I understand the safety needs around doing this. If you have never done this before, have a professional on hand or seek help to make sure you are doing it properly. All of the wiring was a very convoluted task. If you guys want to learn how I did this entire electrical box, you can head over to my blog where I give a full step-by-step -step breakdown on how to do this. But right now, you get the fast-forwarded version of how I did this. It just comes off, leaving the exposed wire underneath. Take all the pieces, connect them together, and tighten now my screws. That's it. I'm sorry I'm not explaining it in this video, but explaining how to wire something is like watching paint dry. Not gonna lie. Day six. The last day to the DIY process. All I had left to do was attach those metal braces onto the beam and put my electrical box on and then I was donezo. I started with attaching my two metal braces that were now a cool industrial black. So I did this for both braces and then I was moving on to the part that made me the most nervous, the electrical box. Those wires had to be squished down like a tight can of sardines. So I used clamps to hold it down and then I had to use the screws that come with the electrical box and I got in there and I made sure that that box fit in nice and tight. All I had to do was add the plate on top and basically we were done. Check that out. Thank you, Amazon. I couldn't find a black chain anywhere. Didn't exist in hardware stores, at least not in Canada, but I was able to source some off of Amazon and they were perfect. I've also linked the ones that I found down below in my description box, so check it out. And essentially I had something called bow shackles, which were going to be the way I connect my chains together. So on my metal frame, I attached my bow shackles, then I put on my chain, and then I would lock up the bow shackles. And I did this for all four sides, and and look at that, an entire industrial beam light ready to go. Nobody else is clapping, it's fine. <laughs> I, I'm so tired. It's been a long journey getting to this point. All we need to do now is head over to Jenny Lynn's and set her up. Wow, wow! Was this not the most insanely cool DIY you've ever seen? How good does that look? It looks so amazing! 
but I'm just totally blown away. I am so happy with the way this beam turned out. That beautiful reclaimed barn beam turned into such a stunning piece of wood. That beam looked so good in the walnut color and it had so much character. All the little industrial bits, the metal frame and the black chain, all just really added and elevated the look of this thing. I tried to source the smallest electrical box I possibly could because I really wasn't a big fan of the fact I had to put it on top. I wanted to be able to hide it inside the beam, but it just wasn't something I was able to do based on the size of the beam. Because it was hanging so high up on the ceiling, I honestly think it looked pretty good. The light was being hung up in industrial space, so that place really gave itself to the look of the light. It all just complemented each other so much, and it was so awesome to see it hanging above my live edge table. I'm happy with the way this DIY turned out. I think it's beautiful. And in terms of DIY difficulty, I would rate this project a 4 out of 5 stars. I think I deserve a pat in the back because all three of those projects had something crazy going on with it, whether it was the rusting, the warped board, or a crazy reclaimed beam. All three of those projects looked so cool in the space and I'm just so happy with the way they turned out. I hope you guys like it too. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed my DIY journey with Fusion Mineral Paint. You guys should let me know which project was your favorite. Was it the radiator, the live edge board, or the industrial beam light? Let me know in the comments section below and let me know what kind of projects you guys want to see coming up. I'm kind of excited for 2020 and I want to know what you guys want to see so let me know and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.